Thank you for taking the time to check out, man, the do's and don'ts of how to pre-qualify for a mortgage. First things first, you need to figure out who's gonna supplement this mortgage. A mortgage is a loan that allows you to purchase a home. And in order to get that mortgage, you have to go through an institution, whether it be a bank, a uh, private mortgage lender, a credit union, whatever, what have you. Um, Historically, you get better rates going through a credit union, but that's not always the case. It just depends. I was actually pre-qualified by a credit union, but I ended up going through a different mortgage lender uh, to actually get my mortgage because of some bull that I will explain later on in this series. You'll need to, of course, have your taxes. So in this state, uh, when you're pre-qualifying, it's all about proof. Like they don't take your word on anything. You have to prove everything and then you need to prove how you can prove that. And then you probably need to prove that too, um, especially being self-employed like myself. Whew, scrutiny. Uh, it's a rigorous process, but you know it's, it's definitely possible to do if that's what you want to do. I'm proof of it. So you'll need to have your previous tax returns filed um, before you can really do anything. Uh, you can have a whereabout, you know, kind of have it start having a conversation about the range that you'll be shopping within, but um, you'll need to definitely get your taxes done with a regular job. I believe you can do the last year's income, but being self employed, they require the last two years and then they average, they take the average of it to get your qualified income. That was another hold up for me because I graduated college in 2018, so the company had formed that year, but I had. I wasn't giving it my all because I was still in school. So that took a substantial amount of time for me as well as I had to do an internship my final year of school. So that took a lot out of time as well. Um, so during that internship, I learned a lot, but I couldn't dedicate that time to building RDK. Yeah, yeah, big super. So you'll need your W-2s. Uh, I'm self-employed, but I am on payroll for my company. So I have W-2s, but I still had to prove income, you know, via tax return. Uh, I had to submit a profit and loss statement, a balance sheet. That's pretty much, you know, all your income that you want to use to qualify for the loan. Make sure you can prove it. Okay, on the opposite side, they'll also use your debts to calculate uh, what they call a DTI, which is debt to income ratio. Your debts include, you know, credit cards, uh, any type of loans you have, whether it's a car loan. Uh, another mortgage could be a payday loan, unpaid taxes from the IRS, federally owed taxes. Student loans is a huge one, especially for our generation because they're ridiculous. The total student loan debt is about 1.6 trillion, I think. That's the number off the top of my head. I don't know if, how accurate it is. I'll look it up, but whatever it is, it's ridiculous. Um, there has to be something done about it because it's proving that it doesn't work. If it worked, why is it such a large debt? Like if it was able to be paid back, then that makes sense. You know, you take out loans in any other scenario because you'll be able to pay them back, especially in an investment. If you're considering college an investment, then it makes sense that, okay, I'll take this money up front. I'll be able to pay it back with interest over time because I stand to earn more. But if there's such a high level of student loan debt, hmm, it makes me consider, does it work? I don't know, I have to get into that. Yeah, it's definitely not the same investment opportunity that it was for our parents and, uh, you know, those who attended college uh, decades before we did because their price has gotten so astronomically high. Uh, like if you go to college out of state, geez, Louise, it's almost criminal. I think it actually is criminal because you're telling 17 and 18 year olds to make a decision that'll affect the rest of their life financially or their rest of their life overall. But whatever, you'll need, you know, basic things. Uh, once you fill out an application with uh, whichever mortgage lender you go through, uh, you need driver's license, social security card, folder structure attached for you down below so that you can go ahead and download it and kind of get those things in order. It's super helpful to have them handy. So when they ask for them, you can just reply in a quick email versus having to scramble for things. I'm a pretty organized guy, but this process pushed me to my limits. Yeah, so those are the things you need to consider when you're pre-qualifying for a home. Hopefully you found some value in this video. If so, like it, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I'll be bringing more content just like this so that you can buy a house. No cap.